Reflection. And this poem is very special to me because it was my first. I remember feeling very low that day, yet I found myself reflecting upon the great things God had done in my life since I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I thought about my salvation and the awesome price the Lord Jesus Christ paid for it on Calvary about 2,000 years ago. In my mind, I was transported back to the foot of the cross in what I could only describe as a vision of my Jesus. My Jesus, my Jesus, how I love to proclaim the love, joy, and peace that accompany that name. He gave the blind sight and he healed the lame. Praise be to God Almighty, he is still the same. I love him from the very depths of my heart, wondering how I ever lived when we were apart. He touched me with the vision of his death on the cross to save a poor sinner like me who was lost. I could see the horrible stripes he took for my healing. Oh, that this world could see and really start feeling. I could see the crown of thorns placed on that precious head, a crown for the King of Kings whose precious blood was shed. I could see the nails driven in his hands and feet and the painful expression on my Savior's face so sweet. I could hear his plea for forgiveness, a fantastic act of love, directed and requested of his Father in heaven above. His voice rang through the darkness, a cry that it was done, a cry to a lost and dying world that the Son of God had won. I could see the jagged spear thrust in his side. The world thought him dead, but he will ever abide. I could see that bloody picture of that day so long ago, the greatest act of love inspired to win freedom for my soul. My story has a happy ending because Jesus lives today to show those who are earnestly seeking He's the only way. He bore my sins and sorrows, my grief and my strife. And in addition to all of this, he gave me eternal life. My precious, precious Savior, draw ever closer to me. For it was your wondrous love that set this captive free. How wonderful it is to praise and worship the King Oh, that this entire world would let their praises ring. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for love incomprehensible, a debt I can never repay. You gave me life and love, dear Lord. You are the life, the truth, and the way. Reflection Another Passover season was approaching. I was very burdened with problems and the cares of this life, but I wanted to do something special for the Lord to let him know how much I loved and appreciated him. So I began to say to the Lord, I don't want to focus on anything but the great sacrifice Jesus made for me. I don't understand many things about this life, but the one thing I do understand above all else is Christ's love for me. It's enough just to know that you died for me. Lord, I have so many questions about this life. There are so many problems. There is unending strife. There are so many things in understanding I fail to see. Yet in the depths of my heart, I know that you hold the key. But as I begin to reflect upon the endless ages of eternity, it's enough just to know that you died for me. Now, I don't know what makes the world go round or what makes the birds sing such a beautiful sound or what causes the trees to grow so strong and tall. I also don't know what makes the snow or rain to fall. Yet, as I reflect upon eternity, 
It's enough just to know that you died for me. As I gaze up at the heavens and the magnificent starry sky, I begin to think to myself and ask the question why. Why did you hang those stars up there so bright? And how did you create such a glorious sight? But as I reflect upon eternity, it's enough just to know that you died for me. Lord, what about the moon so clear, giving such brilliant light, creating such a heavenly glow on a warm summer's night? And what about that wonderful soft and gentle breeze that gently sways the leaves and gently bends the trees? But as I reflect upon eternity, it's enough just to know that you died for me. Well, I guess the greatest mystery is my Savior's love. It seems as deep as the ocean, wide as the sky above. Dear Jesus, I must ask, why did I have any worth that you should sacrifice just to give me new birth? I don't really understand. I only know that when I reflect upon eternity, my Lord, my God, it's more than enough just to know that you died for me. Reflection. As I continue to grow in the Lord through his word, I began to see the personality and the very nature of God. The Bible beautifully reveals the heart and mind of Almighty God. It seemed that at first I saw him as my loving Heavenly Father, as Jesus describes him in the Gospels. Then I realized that he is indeed the judge of all heaven and earth. I also realized that before I accepted my salvation, he was my judge and his verdict for me was guilty. Now that I have received the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, my guilt changed to innocence, and my judge became my loving Heavenly Father. The verdict has come in on my particular case, and the judgment it will bring, I must surely face. The judge stared at me and said with a pause, you are not brought to trial without a cause. You have broken the law of God and have been found guilty in an open examination of facts that you can clearly see. The judge who is a holy God and so full of love and mercy said in a voice marred with pain, the sentence, death for eternity. I was led away to prison. My prison had no bars. It did not hide the earth beneath, the sky, the moon, or stars. But nevertheless confining, I was lonely, tormented, and sad, wondering can anyone stand before God, or even if anyone had. But the judge loved me with a passion, not wanting me to die. I ask myself over and over, and I still cannot answer why. He said, I want to save you but my justice I must satisfy. You see, I am the eternal God, not a man that I should lie. He said, in order for the wages of sin to repay, one must die in your stead. That is the only way. Someone who is righteous and upright before me can save you and allow me to grant mercy. Since it's impossible for one like you to overcome sin. I will send my only son as a man in the battle he will win. He will take your burden of sin, my anger and my wrath, and to reconcile the two of us, faith in him will be your path. The verdict in your case has changed from guilty to innocent and could be changed for every soul. For this cause my son was sent. Because of the life and death, 
of the only righteous one, who is my pride, my joy, and my only begotten Son. You have now received a pardon that is completely full and free, the adoption as my child, and eternal life, your destiny. Reflection I have the most wonderful family in the world. You must realize that I am slightly prejudiced. As I was growing up, I always had that sense of well-being, knowing that God had especially blessed me with a family that loved me. I thought I knew all about love, but my greatest lesson was yet to come. I met the Lord Jesus Christ, and in Him I found a love so true and so complete and the capacity to love others in a way that I never knew existed before. My initial ideas about love were vastly different from what I experienced in God. So I decided to pose the vital question, what is love? Since time immemorial, this question has been pondered. Each of us at one time in our lives has wondered. One day I found the answer in the depths of my being, a truth so glorious and wonderful I couldn't help seeing. A startling view of loneliness and emptiness inside, in a particular size and shape, such that someone could abide. I wondered, how can I fill this inner desolation that people have no doubt experienced since creation? No sooner had I asked this question, quickly the answer came. I heard the Lord's still small voice. He even knew my name. He said, I created you, and of this void I am very much aware. And I am here to heal that desolation, lack, and despair. You see, I fit perfectly in that void space in your heart because that is the way I made you right from the start. If you sincerely ask me, I will be more than happy to come in. Together there's nothing we can't do for we will always win. And you will cease to wonder about this question of love. The answer will be crystal clear once you are born from above. Because you see, I am love. Therefore, everything you need. And because I loved you, in others you will plant this seed. You will tell them how I love them so. And I gave my only son just to let them know. He broke down that wall of sin that separated me from you. And did everything a father like me could ask his son to do. Tell them. My son's death was filled with untold grief and pain. And the question that faces them is, will his death be in vain? Now, about this question, what is love? I can now clearly see. I can tell this world without a doubt that love lives in me. Reflection. I had just suffered a major disappointment. As I was contemplating my pain and wondering how I would ever recover from it, the Spirit of the Lord asked me, Cindy, who loves you more? Somewhat startled, I replied, No one, Lord. No one loves me as much as you do. As a point of truth, no one can possibly love us more perfectly in every way than God does. He is love, and His love always seeks our highest good. It is all-encompassing and eternal in its scope. He then began to give me a word that has served to sustain me throughout all the trials and challenges that have come and those that are yet to come. Each time I am tempted to question his love for me and his concern for my well-being, I remember his question to me that day, 
who loves you more. I heard my father say in a soft, sweet, gentle voice, I have something to say which should cause you to rejoice. I have so much to give you, so much good in store. Just ask yourself the question, child, who loves you more? Open up your eyes, just look around and see. Every good and perfect gift comes from me. But when things happen to you that you do not understand, you question my love for you and all of my plans. The circumstances are before you and it's all you seem to see. Listen, I will be responsible. Just turn it over to me. And when you don't understand why things happen as they do, trust me, I will perfect everything concerning you. But to the truths taught in my word, child, you must yield. Did I not say my truth will be your buckler and your shield? Cast your cares upon me, and I will set you free. Please purpose in your heart, you'll put your faith in me. Again I say, I have so much to give you, so much good in store. Just ask yourself the question, my child, who loves you more?